Hi everybody and welcome back to the Gentleman's Talk. I'm here, I'm James Dean Little John. I'm your magnificent host. Uh, we're the most. Um, how are we? How devil? I mean, let me crank that down a little bit before we get breaking into me talking my my bullshit of stuff I normally talk and <laughs> just jumping in. How the devil are you? How are you today? How are you feeling? How's your weekend been? How's your week been? Have you relaxed this weekend? Have you been giving yourself purpose, giving yourself vision? What have you been doing this weekend? I know a lot of us are still a little bit lazy, but just remember, we're here to give us ourselves that future. We must be investing in ourselves, people. I'm just going to crank that. I think it's still a little bit there, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Because otherwise, I try and talk over it. I get a bit racy when I talk over the music. And then I'm sat there going, what am I doing? I'm, I feel like I've done a marathon. And it's because I'm competing with the beat that's in the back of my ear, as well as trying to talk over it. And then I think, oh, I need to get all in. Um, so when I sort of slow things down a little bit, I tend to talk a little bit slowly. Uh, it's, it's just how my, brain, how, my, how my brain thinks. How's my brain thinks? But yeah, do you know what? I've had a fantastic fucking week. I've had a really good week. Uh, do I need to put fucking in there? No, not really, but that's how I roll. Um, I do like to swear. Sorry, I do. Um... I just, um, for me, it's, um, they do say that creative people do swear a lot. Um, now, I know that that's probably a creative person that said that, um, but I'm going to roll with it because I do swear a lot. I just think it's funny, you know, but I use it in the right tone. It's like, um, the, I think the, the beauty of the British language is you can say things in a certain tone and you can say the same word in so many different ways. And, and I think it's, for me, I think that's a fantastic thing, the way you say it. And I'm trying to think of some, some reasons, it's like what I would say. is um, Like if I was going to say fucking twat, I'd be like, you, you can say that in so many different ways in the, British, in the British language, in the way we articulate things. It's like, oh yeah, he's a fucking twat, isn't he? Oh, you fucking twat. Oh, for fuck's sake, you're a fucking twat. Oi, you fucking twat. Do you know what I mean? You, you just have to slow your tone down a little bit or speed it up or say it in such a different way that, you know, but it means it's the same word, but it means so much. And you can put that with absolutely anything. And I think that's the beauty of the British way, isn't it? We say that. It's like, uh, oh, yeah, man, I was absolutely fucking twatted last night, mate. Oh, yeah, I got fucking twatted. Shut your mouth, mate. Or I'm going to fucking twat you. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 beautiful. It's a magician. I was thinking that today. You can tell I've had one of those weeks where I've been I've, a lot of self reflection, shall we say? Um, so yeah, I've just been. I've had a good week. I've had a good week at work, um, which was always always nice. And then this weekend, I did a little bit of giving back, um, in the sense that um, I mean, I'm I'm feeling the pain now, um, physically because of my my busy weekend. So I had a really sort of good week. Um, smashed out the bag, really got some, um, made some real interns into my role, which made me feel a little bit confident. Um, and I, I did a, um, something last week that I've never done properly, which is unusual because there's a lot of people that probably think like, what the fuck, you haven't done that before. Um, but I stood in front of a conference today, uh, so today, <laughs> Wednesday, James, switch on. Um, I stood in front of a conference on, on Wednesday and delivered a um, my own uh, presentation on training and, and made it interactive added a couple of acronyms and there the smart acronym uh, which is good relatable for um you know for training but i the, do you know what i all day I, I don't tend to get nervous really i it's, it's it's a bit of a weird thing um but i don't tend to worry i i I'm, i tend to go into i can go into most situations personally and i can adapt myself to the to the personality of the people around me so I, I have this, and it is, most people, it's probably down to the fact that I'm used to um, putting a mask on for years of hiding depression and stress, that you, but you adapt to a skill where you can put that mask on in, in any situation. So I can walk into a fucking, a group full of fucking football hooligans and feel like they're part of the team. I would literally be like, yeah, fuck shit up, yeah, fuck. I could do that, you know, I could do that. And then you could, you know, not in the sense, the violent sense, but I said I could adapt to that situation so I wouldn't look out of place. Right up to the spectrum where I could walk in with anybody at any level uh, and, you know, posh side of things, we're talking the upper, the upper echelons, um, you know, I could walk in them and I could, and I could, 
I could hold my own in that situation like that. And then at the same time, I can, you know, mediocre. I can go with different friends. I'm, I'm a different person with, obviously, my wife. I'm a different person with my mum and dad, to a degree. They see a different side to me nowadays. I'm a little bit more freer in the sense, as I get older, I'm not too fussed about what I say. This is who I am. Accept it or, um, you know, fucking don't. It's up to you. I'm a fucking adult now, you know. Um, and this is who I am. So, um, But they don't. They embrace it because, I again... It's who you are around. I'm not an obnoxious, I'm not an obnoxious prick. Um, so yeah, so um, I had that ability to adapt and and, and overcome. Um, and I think from years of stress and depression, you have that ability to put a mask on, um, and it's sort of kind of um, it's a skill that you develop. That anybody out there listening right now who's who's had some sort of depression, some sort of anxiety or stress, and you're in a situation where you um, you know, you have to perform, um, you know, for your job or whatever, uh, whether it's giving a presentation or speaking to people, training, whatever it may be, you put a mask on. There's times where we've gone into work and we've literally been inside fucking screaming, absolutely screaming inside. Don't want to be here. I'm exhausted. Fuck this shit. Fuck that. And you know inside you're looking at people and they're saying something to you and you just want to fucking punch them or you're like, fuck off. You... But but on the on the face, no, you are a professional fucking Peter, mate. You know, you'll put that mask on and you'll hide it. So you would develop that. But we become, as men, we become very, very good at that. Very good. Uh, a little too good, actually. It's almost like we all, um, you know, they say they say someone like a liar. And, you know, if you, if you meet a liar, you can tell someone who can... A good liar is actually a very, very, very dangerous person. A very dangerous person. Um, and we look at it as you would think that's an attribute, but it's not. So it's actually an, a massive negative because if somebody can lie and convince you, it's a very manipulative personality. Um, but and it's the same. We we do the same with our as men. We do the same. We manipulate people to think that we're here. Um, I remember being in work one time, and I remember holding a morning meeting, fucking full of praise. Um, in my last job, and I was like, yes, guys, just fucking go and do this, you know, I came in on a bit of a high in the sense that the music, was, there was a new song out at the time, I remember it, I had it fucking pumped up really loud, and this was like half seven, I was like, oots, 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 you know, having a fucking good time, and, um, you know, I, I, did the, I delivered the morning brief and said, let's fucking go, and everybody went off to work, and I remember walking into my, um, my boss's at the time's office, who wasn't there, and I just remember breaking down crying. It was almost like fucking such an emotional overload because I was trying so hard to put a fucking brave face on to sound like I was okay and everything's okay and we're going to fucking do this. And you and I remember going in just going, fuck. And then I remember coming out and then walking over the road and I was like, you're right, you look a bit tired, mate. And it was where I'd obviously been crying. And I remember going like, yeah, I'm all right. Um, yeah, fine, just a bit tired, you know, and, and you put it down, and everybody glazes over, you, you've given a reason, you're fucking fine, humans don't want to probe, let's fucking leave them alone, and, but inside, I, there was, I was dying inside, and that's where it, le it led into the, the demise of my own mental health, and we have that ability to smash that mask on, it's quite fucking dirty, really, I think we're a bit too, and, uh, you know, I think, you know, that's why probably men are fucking very good manipulators in, in certain relationships and certain circumstances, that's why you see a lot of um, high high end you know high performing people and men because they have the ability to manipulate people um, and that's that's unfortunately that is a good leader isn't it you know we were talking I was talking about this yesterday actually um, and I'll digress into that in a minute but um, but yeah so Wednesday I stood up in front of everybody and I, do you know what I, like I said I don't feel uncomfortable talking to people um, sometimes I'll avoid a situation if I can and, and normally if I'm in a situation that was a situation I couldn't get out of so I kind of, and I'd agreed to do a thing. I'd, and what I'm doing is I'm pushing my boundaries all the time to see how I perform uh, and see how my body takes it. And do you know what? I was absolutely fine until I remember walking down the stage. I was walking down the side of the aisle and the stairs. And I remember raising my hand in the air going, Wee! like I was some sort of fucking, I was thinking like a game show. That's what I was thinking in the back of my fucking head. Like, this is just a fucking game show, mate. And I remember going, like, Wee! and a couple of people laughed at me. And a couple of, most people looked at me and went, what the fuck is this crazy prick doing? And I was like, hold on two seconds. I wasn't comfortable with that music level. So I apologise for that. Um, I was getting it right. Setting the right ambiance, you know? Um, so yeah, I, and I was fine until I got... I Almost it's like it was, um, it was like set in stone. 
I put my fucking foot on the bottom step and then fucking bosh. I walked a couple of steps forward, took a left turn, looked up. Oh, have I turned it off? I don't really know. I'm a doozy here, Pete. I did. What a dickhead. Um, sorry. And I remember and I remember taking that last step and I looked round, I grabbed the clicker for the for the slideshow and I said to Jamie, Is this the right button? He's the, the, the digital guru at work. I said, Is this the fucking button? Because I don't want to fuck this up. And I remember just looking around and then seeing fucking like a plethora of people, like a fucking sea of faces. And I was like, Oh my fucking days. <laughs> oh Henry <laughs> I was literally did that for my mate. And uh, you know, and I remember looking up and I was like, Oh my fucking days. Gonna have fucking doozy of a time here. So I remember looking and then I just went, Okay, just focus and I and I looked and luckily my best mate who works now alongside me in a sense, um, you know, in the field he's in the same organisation. I remember looking up at him and I saw his fucking little his little peanut head and his fucking beard and I was like I could just focus on him. And then I I focused between him, uh, uh, my boss, and uh, one of my other friends in the the middle row. And I focused between the three of them. So it's like I was delivering a speech to three and not fucking like, you know, fucking 63 or whatever it was. Um, So I was like, yeah, okay, that'll do me. Um, But I had a really good time. As in like, I remember doing the speech and delivering it and I got wobbly. I got a bit wobbly in between, a bit like fucking, and it was because I was talking, so I mentioned on there about how, um, you know, my PTSD had really hindered me with my depression, and how I didn't feel confident in my job, so I've learned the ability to sort of blag it, you know, bullshit baffles brains is the big big thing I always live for, and I and I managed to blag it for a long fucking time, and now, and now I wanted to underpin the training, because I was talking about training, I was very passionate about this, and because I was passionate about it, it was really easy for me to deliver, in a sense, I, I was like this has really helped me this has really helped my mental health this has really made me feel confident in my job and made me walk in and, f- and understand the job and help other people which has in turn led me to now be mentoring um three people in work because i love helping people i'm like i want you to succeed and in one of those people i i've literally like been mentoring her for three weeks and she's now got a job on friday successful in her job i coached her through absolutely everything um you know did did all her uh, helped her with all of her um you know her her uplifting stuff and all that jazz and got her promoted and like that to me was like you know fantastic it really really fucking was um because i've been coaching this person and this co- person wasn't having a great time at work um almost being bullied but not bullied to the sense of like you know being you would associate bullying although it will be categorized as bullying because i you know diversity and inclusion advisor i absolutely understand but it's poor leadership and the poor leadership has led to this person absolutely hating going to work and the reason i started coaching her was because i walked into work and um just asked her for a lanyard for my pass and she broke out as we walked into the um into the storeroom and grabbed the thing she just burst into tears absolutely fucking cried her eyes out because she just she was at wit's end and i was like i'm not ever having this nobody should come into work and not want to be here if you don't want to be here and it's because you don't enjoy the job then fucking go and i'll tell someone that then you need to fucking leave because you don't like this job i remember when i was at, uh, at circo and i'd absolutely hated that job and it was about a year i hated probably two years actually i hated that job and I I couldn't find a job that I didn't know what to do. My head was fucking scrambled. My head was frazzled. I was dealing with depression, stress, and PTSD. I wanted to get out of this situation. I didn't know how to get out of this situation. And I was in a really fucking horrible place. Ultimately led to a suicide attempt, unfortunately, because I was so stressed. Because I didn't know who to turn to. Nobody helped me. Nobody said, James, this is your fucking next avenue. Just go and do this. I literally was, everything I'd done, was I figured out. But I was in fucking a hor- horrible, horrible place because I didn't want to be there and I didn't know how to get out of that situation. And everybody just, and again, I just put the mask on. Yeah, just fucking bang a mask on. You'll be good, mate. And everyone thinks you're okay. But inside, like, I don't fucking know what to do. So, you know, although I feel the, the you know, the, the uh, reward spectrum from the fact that I've been able to get to where I am through fucking all of my own hard work... Um, at the same time, I would love to have been collaborative with somebody. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it was a horrible situation. I was a horrible leader at the time. And because of that, I, that fed down to everyone else. 
So I was in a fucking horrible place. So, and that was the, the downside to it, unfortunately. That is absolutely the downside. And she's in a situation where her leader is poor, doesn't know how to lead. And because of that incompetence, if you like, at that level, unfortunately, she just fucking felt awful. And there's a lot of mistakes been made that would have not happened if, you, if, if you'd be on point with your leadership. So to get success, it is like I, I felt very, very, very humbled on Friday when I was the first person she called and said, James, I got the job. And I was like, fucking fantastic. Absolutely fucking fantastic. Promotion for her and her daughter uh, out of that situation where she's not being poorly managed and into a new job to give her a, n a complete new outlook on life. That, to me, rewarded the shit out of my life then. I was, like, so fucking happy. Um, but so, yeah, so, you know, and that's it. I'd, I'd, and I had, so I'd had that on the week. So f Wednesday, Bosch. Friday, got the good news from her. And then um, sa and Saturday, I had uh, an absolutely fucking amazing day. I laid the, um, I, I, I'm very exhausted from it, but I laid the floor, the foundation, if you like, the, all the laminate flooring, all the way through my mother-in-law's house. And uh, did some skip, skip runs and some other stuff as well, you know. Uh, and absolutely loved it because, you know, she's, she's got a house that feels like a fucking home. And I took my time. And it, it turned out beautiful, actually. I was really impressed with it. Um, and then Sunday, did a bit of work today, this morning. Um, and then this afternoon, just chilled out and relaxed, you know. So it's been a really nice time. Oh, and I nearly glanced over the, uh, the highlight of the weekend, actually. I Because I was thinking, what was I, the summer I did? My Saturday night, went out with my best mate, um, my, my good man, Kieran. Um, we went out for a fucking, uh, as everyone's calling it, a date night. Um, we went to the cinema, watched um, Evil Dead Rise. But we also went into Brewdog. We went into Brewdog in Baysie, in old Basingstoke. Went into fucking Brewdog, and they've got a new Brewdog uh, restaurant in there. And I'm not plugging it because, it, I, you know, I'm an aff uh, affiliate and I've got shares in Brewdog, but I have. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, that aside, it was fucking beautiful. Like, when in the burger was handmade, caramelized onion in their fucking sauce, they let you t sample all their and I uh, all their ales. I, I tried a one called uh, Candy Kittens, and it was fucking delicious. I love a sweet drink. Um, ever since when I went to Bruges, actually, and I was drinking some of their pale ales, are really fruity, and I'm like, I fucking love that. So I've always gone for like a fruity ale. Um, and to have Candy Kittens was beautiful. But yeah, went and watched the cinema, had a fantastic time catching up with him. We were sat just chewing the fat over life for, you know, an hour and a half in the restaurant. Um, proper mandate. And I, do you know what? I'm not ashamed to say it. It was a fucking good time. Like, I really, that's what life's about. Life is about fucking having mandates and having good times with men that are on the same level. You know, I've known this guy 29 plus years. Um, fucking fantastic. So we got to chew the fat. We got to put the world to rights, talking fucking shit, kids, future plans, aspirations. We were just, and the thing is, that was what it was about. This get together, having a fucking smashing handmade burger, followed by with, with a fucking proper brew dog pale ale, then into a cinema to watch a fucking um, an amazing horror movie, and then a nice fucking cr gentle cruise back. You know, it was a really good fucking time, and that's the type of things we need to keep ourselves focused. This it's about doing these things, going out on these dates, if you like, if you want to call it a mandate with your mates, because I put the worlds to rights. You know, I absolutely said like this is what we're doing, and we we're, we're and the beautiful thing is, and whenever we get together now, we always talk about future plans. We're really committed to that. We're like, yeah, we're going to do this, this, and this. We're going to, you know, we're going to earn this. We're going to go there, and by doing that, it gives us that motivation. Absolutely, gives us that motivation. So before I break into what I'm going to say, I'm actually going to read something for you. Um, so I was watching uh, TikTok in my in my quiet afternoon, the first time I got to chill out and relax this weekend. And I'm not going to make this drawn out, but there's this um, this little thing that I'd seen, and it was, it, it, but it's it's really quite quite relevant to most people's lives. And um, for me, I, I just thought it was a fantastic fantastic thing to share. And um, by the it says here, by the age of 35, you should be smart enough to realize this. And I'm going to read through these things. So, but number one, someone makes ten times more than you do in a nine to five because they have more leverage with their work. Now, I assume that that leverage means as in they've got more knowledge and experience. So that's their leverage. So they're going to earn more money than you because they um, they become um, a rarity, if you like, indisposable, you know, that, and, and if you get that credibility. So that works. That's a really good thing. Number two, distraction is the greatest killer of success. It stunts and destroys your brain. And it's very true. 
how many of us i'm 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 going to tell you now i could, i can hit hit the nail on the head with this one at the moment i'm really 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 struggling with my podcasts i'm struggling with my artwork i've not done any artwork for 3 weeks i'm really fucking struggling and and for me the reason i'm struggling is because those are the, these are the things that keep me going these are the things that keep me engaged but it's like for me i'm battling adhd and ptsd and the adhd aspect of me fights me all the time saying james you're not getting any dopamine out of this now you need to fucking stop and the, the problem is i'm really fucking fighting hard to continue these podcasts and i'm not saying it to reach out to you because you know in, in that sense but i've been doing this now for well over a year and it's very fucking hard to stay motivated it really fucking is in life and you in I, I received a text message actually from one of my friends. Um, I'm going to mention. I've mentioned him, 10k for 10k. The, the Mark guy, and he said to me, "Mate, I just really, really, really appreciate your podcast, mate." He says, "I can't relate to everything that happens to you has happened to you, but I can relate to some of it." And do you know what? It was just that little from everybody. When I get those things from all of my friends and families or whatever, when I get those notifications, that's what drives me. Because I have been, you know, this, the distraction piece for me with ADHD, I get lost. And it's like my artwork. I can't afford at the moment to keep buying materials to do more to make myself up, you know, out there. Because I've got 15 projects that are still sat there, still not sold. And because they're sat there, still not sold, I'm, I'm genuinely struggling because I can't afford to do more. And I haven't got anything coming in. I, do you know what the other thing, the really disheartening bit for me, and actually it brought a little fucking like a little bit of saliva at the back of my throat there because I emailed Pirate Bay, which I, I thought I did a fucking absolutely phenomenal job on their Pirate Bay um, on their Pirate Bay artwork. I sent out to them and I didn't ask them for money in the end because it only cost £10 and I said, I didn't even say anything, I just sent it in properly, professionally packaged. And I sent over to them and we'd been having communications while it was being done and I, they sent me the address and they said just let me know how you want me to pay the, the money for the postage and I was I just ignored it and then I didn't hear anything so I knew they received it because I paid for extra delivery and I sent it the next day and I, I so I left it thinking they might just fucking contact me and say we just received it fucking fantastic work thank you very much and I, I didn't hear anything for a week and then I so I emailed them um, last week so it would have been a week on the Thursday last week and emailed them on Thursday saying, um, you know, have you received the parcel? Um, not heard anything. And, um, you know, silence is a little bit of a killer for, for an artist to, to not get feedback on what you think about it. And um, genuinely, I haven't heard anything back and it's been well over a week. Um, we're almost encroaching, well, we're into the second week. And I'm really fucking sick. My motivation at the moment for, for a lot of things is fucking ripped apart. When you don't hear that feedback and you, people, you know, and that's the driver for me why do you do this james well i don't do it for you know i'm not doing it for anything other than trying to fucking get feedback it's not like i'm gonna do this artwork i'm gonna afford to pay fucking hundreds of pounds to keep doing it for myself to put nowhere you want to sell it you want to get the feedback but this was a freebie this to the point where and i'm not disheartened i'm not you know I, i'm not mocking the situation but you know i put extra money into that it, it cost me alone to make that for them 90 pounds because i bought the little silver fucking coins that i embedded in resin and i was like and it cost me 12 pounds to send it on all the packaging i thought i could just do with a little bit of feedback mate do you know what i mean and i just i don't know maybe i, I maybe i'm being maybe i'm not waiting long enough week and a half but you email them at a, <laughs> you expect a reply within a week and a half don't you i'm sorry but you do especially if you've had communications before um anyway so I, I digress massively into that there. So distraction, there you go. That's distraction for you. Number three, you shouldn't take advice from people who are not where you want to be in life. And that's very true. So if you want to go somewhere, then don't take advice from somebody that's on a different path to you. Because if you want to succeed, and something's going to come up in a minute that will fill in with that one as, as well. Um, but if you want to succeed, surround yourself with people that are, you know, that are in your in your network. You know, that what you have to do, where you want to go. Um, number four, some of these are quite hard hitting as well. Number four, no one is coming to save your problems. Your life's one hundred percent your responsibility. Now, how many times have I said that? In all of my mental health podcasts, I've said, you're accountable. You are accountable for your own success. You can't blame society for not succeeding. Everything is there that is some form of, there is always an opportunity. 
if you want to succeed in life, there is always an opportunity. Trust me, I've completely done 180 degree fucking turn on my life at 40. Started a complete new profession in a complete new organization. Rattled myself up into the senior management sector, looking to hopefully get into the senior leadership sector because of my own accountability. I've done that. This podcast, I've done that. My artwork, I've done that. I didn't, there's nothing before that. I was blaming everybody, everybody, everything. You didn't do this when I needed you. Even though you didn't understand mental health, you're the fucking problem. I stayed in that job for 12 years. You're the fucking problem. You didn't pay me enough or you didn't do this. No, you endured it for that long. Then you, you need to be accountable for staying in the situation that you're in. I say this all the time. If you're not willing to change and you're not willing to make the difference and try and find an avenue don't blame anybody else it's not your parents fault it's not your fucking brother sister mother fucking work boss my ex-boss my ex-fucking partner it's not their fault you need to make that difference and move forward i'm not talking about trauma trauma experiences and such like as well i'm talking about the regular joe you know you sat there in a stressful situation admittedly you know there is a lot of situations we can't help so you know, we help ourselves, but at the same time, you need to make yourself, you still always need to be accountable. You are 100% responsible for your life. That's the be all and end all of it. Nobody's responsible for your life. I'm not, I'm, I'm, no, I'm only responsible for looking after my children and to get to a certain age. Obviously, that's a, you have a moral sector there where you have to look after them for the rest of their life. Trust me, I'm telling my mum and dad all the time. Anyway, I digress again. Number five, you don't need 100 self-help books all you need is action and self-discipline. Now, what did I talk to you about? This gives me a little bit of the talking around in what I was talking about today. Give yourself a mission. I spoke to you a little while about a little while ago about um, giving yourself purpose, and it is true. Like this is a battle for me to do this at the moment. I've got so many ideas in my artwork um, head at the moment that is unfucking believable. If I had an endless stream money, I would be creating the craziest fucking shit. So I'm, I'm constantly there. I'm giving myself purpose. My self-discipline is I am going to do this every Sunday. Re regardless of missing other areas, I will do this every Sunday. That is self-discipline. That is action. This is what helps me. This helps me digest everything throughout the week. It helps me talk about positives. And it helps me pro promote positivity in such a direct way that it impacts me in a direct way. And that's the importance. Because I'm talking positive to help you... I'm actually indirectly helping myself in a really, really big way. And that's what gives me. And then also when I have a bad week and I digress, I digest all of the bad week stuff to you. What that does is it allows me to focus and, un and, and undo all the, uh, the bad work. And I get to talk to you about it. And like I said to you, this is in invaluable to me. So self-discipline, self-discipline, whether you need to go to the gym, stop eating, stop drinking, stop smoking, whatever you're doing. If you need to stop it, start it, do it, get it back, do it. Self-discipline and action. Number six, unless you went to college to learn a specific skill, i.e. doctor, engineer, lawyer, you can make, oh, this is a bit of a weird one, you can make more money in the next 90 days just learning sales. I suppose, yeah, I'm not going to plug that shit. Fuck that shit. Um, it's probably true. Don't give a fuck. Nah, not plugging that. <laughs> Jog on, James. Number seven. What's this? See, I didn't. I did, obviously didn't fucking triage you, did I? Didn't do my inspection, my insurance checks. Uh, number seven. No one cares about you. This is no one cares about you. So stop being shy. Go out and create your chances. That is so true. Do you know? It's like another thing that was in the back of my head when I was doing that presentation is nobody cares about me here. If I do a good job, I'm gonna. They'll, they'll say I'll do a good job. He's done a, and I did get a lot of feedback, which is amazing. If I did a bad job, I just fall in to the crowd and I undo all of my own personal hard work. So that was the key part. I had to deliver for my own credibility. But at the same time, and that's because of where I want to go and what what I want to do, go. This was my showpiece. This was my center stage, if you like. This is the first time where I can go, I can be where you lot are because I'm now going to do it better than you. And, and I don't mean that in an arrogant say, sense, I mean that in a confidence way. So I say, I stood up and was like, I'm going to show you I can deliver a good fucking speech with passion. I don't need a microphone because I've got a deep enough voice. And I'm going to show you the passion that I have. And I'm going to change people's minds. And what did I do? All of that. Because I felt confidence in myself. Yes, I was nervous at the time. 
but I felt confidence in myself in the, in, the, in my ability to showcase myself because no one's going to showcase anyone for me apart from myself. It wasn't like I was going to do a, 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 a mediocre time there and I was going to wait for someone to come and go, wasn't he good? Let's boost him up. Yeah, wasn't he boss? Wasn't he fucking brilliant? And he'll probably look and go, I, I appreciate that you're saying he's brilliant, but no, he wasn't brilliant. What you want to do is do what I did. Go up there and showcase it. I made a fucking, I learnt a, I did a course, a four hour course on, on PowerPoint presentations on how to make them streamline and smooth and, and interactive rather than you straight one slide to the next slide. It was all animations to draw you to the next slide. Learnt that, paid for that myself. Bought myself a new pair of fucking shoes. Only 18 quid, but I knew I was going to look fucking smart and presentable. And I stood up there and I, I made sure that I was on point from in my... I had a fucking 10-minute window to showcase myself in front of the whole of my region. Because that, that was it. So it's the whole of the region. I stood up in front, including all of the seed leadership team, and went, this is my time to shine. Fucking do it. And I had the confidence. And the feedback came back. It could have gone catastrophically wrong. But that was my that would have been my own fault. I'm accountable. I'm a hundred percent in charge of my own destiny. I knew what I wanted to do on the day. And I did it and I delivered and hopefully that'll come to fruition. As in, you know, this this maybe they'll see actually fuck this guy is brilliant. That's what I want them to say. But that's why I work fucking tirelessly. I don't work tirelessly to fucking, you know, beat myself up into a fucking coma and fucking absolutely give myself stress and depression. I don't do it for that reason. Obviously not. That's a downside when you are constantly delivering all the time, um, unfortunately. But what I do it for is I do it for people to ha to hold credibility to people and be, you know, that, that go-to person and be the friendly face. Enjoy my job. You need a job to go through life, to fucking have money, to have fun. So why not enjoy the job you do? If you can do it and you have that opportunity, I've spent fucking 10 years in a job or 21 years in a job I loved but the last two years, I crippled it. And I've, and I've had a couple of poor jobs between. But now I'm in a situation where I'm comfortable. I'm in my job. I enjoy it. That's a, that's a very... I take that as a very, very... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I can't fucking think. I, I, I'm very great. That's it. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful that I'm in that situation now. But I can tell you now, if you've been listening to this from day fucking one, that hasn't come in the last fucking day that hasn't come and, and just landed on my plate i've worked fucking hard i i do an uh, you know i do a fucking 40 hour week i raise fucking children i've got my missus i've got three dogs i've got to raise a fucking family i've got to perform i got to do a second job i'm looking after my my mum and dad as much as i can where i can and my brother and, you know what i mean and it's kind of like for me all of these things i do is because it, it, it gives me that focus. It gives me that purpose. Anyway, um, so no one cares about you. Yeah, so go out, create your chances. Massively important. If you find someone smart, this is good. If you find someone smarter than you, work with them. Don't compete. How many people have you sat and gone, he's smarter than me, I'm going to compete and make him feel shit, or I'm going to try and... Why? Why, why? I don't do that. I don't. Literally, if someone's smarter than me, I will befriend you. And I would go, how are you so fucking smart? I want to learn. I want just a smidge of what you've got. You know, that's that kind of thing. I want to I want to learn off of you because you've probably put in shitloads of fucking hard work to get where you are. You don't doesn't just fall on your fucking lap. I want to learn from you, but we don't get that. Very male dominated fucking workforces. And all you do is fucking argue and, and piss and moan and try and fucking chuck them under the bus. And I sit there and go, why? You're not going to chuck me under the bus, mate, because I'm very, very good at making sure that every fucking step is followed. I've done that through basically working in, in a compliance state, if you like, because I work in compliance. And, and also because I was very I, in the Royal Air Force, I had to work to a stringent program and everything I did was recorded with the aircraft. So if anything had fucking happened to that aircraft, um, I could have been accountable. And, and, and by this, I mean right down to the wire. I'm going to give you a situation that there was a colleague in my trade um, it was a corporal and an SAC at the time, and they were doing the shroud inside the shroud. So the the things is the rear of the wings on a uh, on a Lancaster up at BBMF Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, and um, and basically one of the wires had been cut, 
um, to the ailerons and or some wire to the flaps or I don't know which one it was. I can't remember. Um, and they got the blame for it. And they look back at all of the fucking records and they were held to account. They could have been potentially in a situation where if that aircraft had flying, someone died, they would have been held to account. And it turns out he, uh, there was no, th- he couldn't have done because he was a painter. He can't cut fucking wire. There's nothing we have in, that was thingy. So I don't know if the, f- the investigation went further on. But when you deal with that level of accountability and assurance and working with aircraft, you do tend to make sure your, your tracks are well and truly covered. Um, and, and finally, um, this is a big one for me. Um, so, yeah, don't, don't compete with them. Work with them. It, it, because that will make them feel better that they're mentoring and coaching you because they probably worked hard. And also, it will build up that collaboration piece. We're, we're very siloed. All of us just want to fucking, I'm going to really succeed. You do know we could succeed slightly quicker with a lot less stress if we did it as a team. And you're like, eh, you got a fucking good point there, Jimbo. <laughs> and this one, I need to fucking say this because, okay, um, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a non-smoker. I don't like fucking smoking um, cigarettes at all. I fucking hate it with a, an absolute passion. I don't know why. Uh, well, actually, I do know why. My dad nearly died um, in in the in the nineties. Um, got told if he didn't stop smoking, uh, he was going to fucking die. And um, you know, he, he's he stopped when that doctor told him that because he was only in his um, it must have been what in his thirties. Yeah, thirties and forties, maybe, and maybe no, thirties. He was in his thirties and getting told he, he was going to die. No, he's not. He's in his. He was in his late thirties, um, and he got told he was going to fucking die. So uh, he, he was on like he was it's them days in the eighties and nineties where cigarettes were the big thing. You weren't a fucking cool kid, but I did complete opposite because um, I was just brought up and never really liked it. Uh, Mum's always smoked, and um, I, I just I never. It's not my bag. It's not my fucking bag. And the reason I'm going to say that is because it says smoking has zero benefit in your life. This habit will only slow your thinking and lower your focus. Um, and that, the reason I mentioned that is obviously you felt a bit of passion there. I'm very passionate about that. I don't agree with smoking. I think it's just a way of fucking killing yourself. Um, try to avoid it um, to a degree, you know. Um, yeah, it's not my bag. It, it's such a it's such an antisocial thing now. I don't know why um, people really do it now. I don't know. It's, it's quite a, it's quite a it's always been for me so i'm probably there's probably people out there going fuck you, you've never smoked so um you wouldn't know and, and i'll be like okay well fair enough you've got you you've got a gun over me there mate but um uh, anyway we digress so yeah what so what this the whole purpose of this today the whole purpose of, of, of today is to to understand give yourself that mission um for me, it's it's about working collaboratively, working as a team. I also saw another video. I, 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 I'm really into this mental health thing. But it's kind of, um, as men, we all want to be siloed. We all want to be lone wolves. We need to work as teams, you know. And the reason I say that is because um, mainly it really hit home going out for uh, the mandate on Saturday. Um, it really did hit home because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being out. I enjoyed socialising. Uh, I enjoyed chew- talking and just chewing the fat and just being in a social... Th- I mean, the cost of living is a crippler. I mean, that burger and a fucking pint. Um, phew, it's 20 fucking three pounds for a burger and a pint. It's just... I don't... It's, it's not justifiable. And it, it's a catch-22 because we're, you know... You want to go out and socialise, but fuck that with... That feels like that fucking... I, honestly, when he when he put the food down and they ate it, and then you know when you pay the bill and you're like, 23 pounds, you just feel like someone's fucking shoved a big fucking fat floppy dildo. You know, one of those big fucking fisty ones that flop around about a foot long. Not that I know. Um, but you've had one of them stuffed up dry, and you think, oof, it's a bit rough, that. <laughs> you know, it's a bit rough. Um, so, yeah, is it? We, I don't know. I enjoyed the aspect of it. But the main pu- purpose of it, the main focus is, it's just talking about things, getting collaboration. Um, and I want to give a, like I say, a massive shout. I'm going to shout out to uh, Mark again. He's still doing his 10K for 10K. Uh, please go and check him out. Absolutely fantastic, guys. He's, he's running for this. He's doing mental health. He's doing it for a year now, which is even more commendable. Look at his TikTok and he's fucking shared in weight. Um, so, yeah, I fucking love it. And he's, he's really focused on it. So uh, jump in. Hopefully he's going to send me some, um, he sent me some bottles so I can do this mental health um, 
<clears throat> this mental health artwork piece for this this uh, mental health charity. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, and I didn't shout out. I, I felt quite rude actually because I've got a friend. I and I, 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 you know me. I like to mention the people that are close in my little network. My little um, my little. My little wolf pack, if you like. If I mention you, you're my little wolf pack, um, and I, and I do. I'm 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 very big believer in, and all the people that are around me, I am focused on because they are. They just like they're like-minded normally. Because if I've let you in and I'm and I'm mentioning your name, you're a like-minded person. So uh, you know, for me, that's invaluable. I do value friendship so much. I really fucking do. And and that's why, you know, I do give a hundred percent when I get a hundred percent back or when I'm given a hundred percent, I will give a hundred percent. Um it, which is why I always mention uh all of my friends. Like say I I'm actually I'm gonna do a quick plug for Bilster as well. Bilster is on here. He's doing um Carp Vader on YouTube and um he's doing his he's getting back into his um presentation for carping so absolutely fucking great i'm glad that he's got himself focused on something um and making a big difference got massive amount of followers so he talks about carp fishing and everything so you're really invested in fishing jump on and look for carp vader um i'll find his actual um tag when i'll, I'll be more prepared but this is more of a an impromptu to everybody uh, just because i want to emphasize how important it is to recognize your friends understand your friends and, and like I said you know the well-being that good friends bring to you is invaluable you know i i can't honestly say you know uh, having a great fucking day yesterday a gaming session on fucking friday with my mate and my, with my brother and kieran we were playing the new um dead island 2 that was a fucking great laugh breaking into a weekend of fucking good hard work and fucking then cinema and then ha doing a handover. So b both of us, we work in the same place on a Sunday at the golf centre and we did a handover. So we had a little brief bit in the middle where we were fucking cutting grass and everything. So it was good banter. But th everybody brings you this. Everyone, That's the importance of friendship is they bring this to you. So, um, yeah, Bilster, he's jumping on, doing Carp Vader. I'll find his real link and plug in, but you should be able to find him under Carp Vader. Um, as in, um, you know, uh, matey boy, what's his name? Darth Vader. Sorry, I forget because I'm not one of those geeks. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, it, it's fucking fab. And I must mention, always going to mention my number one fan, Bilster uh, and Nelly. <laughs> See? <laughs> I'm trying to add a little bit of fucking tension between them two um, for a bit of a laugh. But I don't. I mentioned um, a guy called Zippy, and I must say to him, um, he likes everything, all of my fucking Facebook pages. Um, Zippy is a guy that I went to Saudi Arabia. We went to Saudi Arabia for um, uh, three months, I think it was. Uh, I mentioned him in one of my early podcasts, actually, ha how much of a laugh he was. And um, we don't, we, we're not, we don't massively talk to each other. It's really crazy. Um, I, I, sometimes I, he's he's one of those people. He's he's a lifer friend, but it's not someone you need to engage with. It's like some of my friends. I have really good friendships with them. You know, you don't have to talk to them all the time, but when you do speak to them, it'd be like. You know, it was like you just saw them fucking last weekend. Do you know what I mean? And they're good. They're valuable friends. And those are the ones that I'm, you know, I absolutely fucking, I, I, I try to hold on to as much as I can. But Zippy, um, he's, you know, he's going through a bit of a tough time himself at the moment. So um, I just want to say he's doing a fucking an amazing job. Uh, he's, he's had a massive turnaround in his life. Uh, with some ups and downs he's got a great missus now so I'm, I'm watching him succeed from where he was when we were in Saudi Arabia that's when we went over I must plug it because it was a fucking great time um, we, we never knew each other he was worked for a completely different organisation and uh, we're both batshit fucking crazy um, I think I'm really uh, he's quite annoying and I'm quite annoying so w when we sort of kind of caught each other on off days we were also quite fucking feisty as well a couple of times he was a bit feisty um, what did he, I think I remember was he used to be I used to f he didn't like being tickled like when he was masking the fucking lines he used to come over and tickle, he'd, he'd go batshit fucking crazy um, you're probably thinking why are you tickling a fucking guy because that's what guys fucking do alright get over it um, so yeah we worked for three months doing the uh, um, the Typhoon Eurofighter for the Saudi Crown Prince. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was a really, really, really rewarding job, and uh, I got a fucking like say that was years ago now, five, six years ago probably. Um, and you know we're still talking all the t and we're still talking all the time. So it's really good. Sorry, I keep moving away from the mic. Sorry, my mate's going to shout at me actually because I've spoke a little bit away from here. It sounds really spot on in my fucking headphones. Because I'm, I realise I'm in the same room, so I apologise for that. Sorry, shit. It's just I get carried away because I get so relaxed talking to you. But yeah, I've got some. I, I was, you know, everybody is uh, is key in my life. That's why I always mention all of my mates. They're, you know, they're they're part of my wolf pack. You know, right up to my fucking dad, brother, 
everyone's one of my brothers to be fa- to be fair um I'm, obviously i've got my my absolute beautiful brother my proper brother but you're all we're all brothers um and that's because i'm nurturing the right people around me and we all help each other out and it's key get the right people around you like i said mark's like yeah we're gonna meet up we're gonna have a fucking drink um and we'll have a catch up and we'll have a fucking chat and i've got zippy who, who likes and promotes my stuff i got nelster kieran fucking billster i i've got everyone's got a stir at the end of their name <laughs> zipster <laughs> nelster billster yeah anyway i'm gonna digress so i'm talking shit now i'm chatting shit talking bollocks so i'm gonna leave you there thank you very much for listening to me um i really appreciate your time like I said, give yourself that mission, okay? Give yourself that mission. Surround yourself by the right, by, around the right people. Give yourself that focus. Don't just sit there and be fucking lazy. One of the little things, before I, before I go, actually, I must say, it was quite interesting. We had a really deep conversation while we were having fucking, uh, where we were having the burger, me and my best mate. And we were saying how we are literally, like, completely, they say opposite distract for all you fucking fruity bastards out there. No, he is, I've said to him before, he's so subdued and chilled out. And we were having a conversation, and, and it's actually ironic how he'd love to have like 10% of what I've got in terms of I'm batshit crazy, I don't fucking sleep, I just keep fucking running around like a loony, always coming out of ideas, stressing, fucking all this. And he said, I'd love 10% of that, mate. And I was like, all right. I said, I'd like fucking, I'd like 1% of what you've got, mate. You're fucking laid back, Larry. So, you know, it's interesting, you know, but you know as we've said and one of the topics i'm going to talk about is the hunter gatherer in my my podcast on my um premium podcast this week i'm actually getting stuck into i've learned enough now so i'm going to talk about the hunter gatherer and we were talking about that he's the gatherer i'm the hunter you know it's and it's very interesting how and and i said it's quite frustrating because i look at him and go you can do more you could do more and he's like no mate i just literally want to go to work do a little bit get the, the small amount as i can to just pay the bills and have a bit of fucking fun time and i'm looking and going no i want to change the fucking world mate let's change the fucking world you can come with me we can do this <laughs> you know and, I, and he sits there and I, and I said you know just put a bit of stress on you you know and he's mentioned it as done before he said yeah i do feel quite stressed because i want to i want to perform for you because you're so enthusiastic and i want to do good for you um you know and he said but that does put me under stress and i'm like oh, okay mate well i'm sorry i don't feel stressed because well, i do but uh, it takes a lot more so when i'm stressed i'm fucking it's like catastrophic because I've, I've already passed all the the crazy adhd shit so if i get stressed it's fucking it's time to shut down that's normally when i go batshit crazy anyway that's enough of me talking now thank you for listening to me i hope you have a fantastic fucking week i really do let's make a difference though and make a difference in your life take ownership as i've said just give me a couple of little numbers there have a listen have a think try and link them to yourself am i doing the right thing am i happy can i make some changes here can i take up a hobby can i give myself a purpose can i give myself something to do over the next five years get promoted do do i need to do a training course this year do i want to lose fucking one stone in weight over three months nice and achievable but get you up and out and about all of these things are key to fucking look at you have to take ownership of your life it's not gonna no one's gonna do it for you you know if you if you're not happy about yourself, no one's going to go. Oh, come on, James, get off the couch, buddy. Let's go for a run. I'm going to fucking push you until you can do it. No, get off your fucking ass and go out and do it. Do what you need to do. Like I said, I'm into fasting, and that fasting has really, really brought down my fucking my intake of food. It's not really fasting. It's it's it is fasting, but it, I you know I don't cast, categorize that. It's just a lifestyle change. I'm not chewing fucking food and throwing things down my throat from fucking seven a.m. till fucking nine p.m. at night. What I'm doing now is giving myself a little tiny window to get some food in me, and I'm eating a lot less, um, and I'm feeling a lot more energetic about life. So all of these things are all lifestyle changes we need to make to to to, make, to give ourselves the right well-being. So have a look at what you're not doing right, what you're not happy about make the difference this week take some notes write some things down get it off your head so it's written down because when it's written down it's a plan a plan take some action and we'll get there all right take care everybody i look forward to speaking to you this week jump onto my premium as well if you want to listen to some content this week from me on the hunter gatherer and i look forward to speaking to you take care everybody much love